Over the summer, Judy Woodruff listened in as a group of Iowa Republicans discussed their support for former President Trump following his indictments, the state of the country and its divisions, and what can be done to move forward. For a different perspective, Judy recently visited Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, to hear from Democrats on those topics and more. It's part of her ongoing series, America at a Crossroads. And the story was produced with help from our friends at PBS 39 WLVT-TV. Now it's just like you just have to choose a side and you automatically have to hate the other side when right. it shouldn't be that way. And it wasn't that way. Strong feelings from these 15 Democrats living in and around the former steel town of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, about the growing sense of division they see in the country today. I'm waiting for someone in Congress to throw a chair at someone, and like they do in other countries. Yeah, I didn't grow up like that. You know, you're either a Republican or you're a Democrat, and they got, everyone got along. It wasn't a, such a bittering, I mean, bickering between each other or, you know, uh, name calling. All that hate is it's just divided. Who do you guys blame for the division? Why do you think it's gotten worse? I think it's heavily influenced by evangelicalism or some kind of religious push and billionaires <laughs> or like the capitalism inequality kind of occurring together. I agree with that on a level, but I also think like Donald Trump himself made it okay. Like our president makes fun of disabled people. It's okay mm -hmm. to do that. Our president, you know, makes racist disparaging comments to people. People came out the woodworks with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think a lot of people were surprised by, like, the rampant racism that came to the surface and people were out and about and proud about it, that we thought, you know, we're, we're progressing in this manner in this country, but were we? Are people just more quiet about it? Yeah, like, I feel like it's from the top down. Like, basically, like, if the leader of the free world is out there acting a certain way, then it just emboldens people. Whether it's Republicans, swing voters, Democrats, everybody believes we are very divided, and everybody laments the fact that we are very divided. They Sarah Longwell, host of the Focus Group podcast, was once again our guide. When we talked to Republicans uh, before, they were very clear about who they blamed for the divisions, right? So they believed that the media was responsible for the divisions in the country, whereas the Democrats today they blamed Trump. They blamed that was that was sort of the only thing that the thread they could find uh, that was it was sort of common. They felt like he created a permission structure for other people to behave uncivilly, to say sort of racist, sexist things. Right around the time Trump got elected, I found out my father's now a Republican and a Trump supporter, and just the things that he says are ridiculous. And <laughs> when he says what, the reasons why he supports him. Like, we're, we're Hispanic, and, like, he has done so many things against... And there's plenty, there's Latinos that support him as well, which I still don't get. But it's just, like, as a Christian man who that's part of your whole identity, and you have this person who's a crook and a cheater and, you know, just a degenerate, and this is who you like, that, to me, doesn't match with Republican values in general, but him as a person, and it's just very weird to me. The relative that I have an issue with who I think is Republican is my son. And the only thing I can say or say to him is how did you get that way? Because as a single father, he grew up with me and he saw how I voted and what our values were. The political parties that used to be about difference in policies, I think Trump changed the conversation to it about being a difference in values. And so it's harder for people to understand how somebody can support somebody like Donald Trump, not because he advocates for low taxes, but because he says terrible things about, you know, people of different races uh, or makes fun of a disabled reporter uh, or says things about women who's under many indictments. They can understand why somebody might support somebody of a different political persuasion who has different opinions. They don't understand how somebody they love, who they believe has good values, can support this person that they think so obviously has bad values. We were in Iowa 
six, seven weeks ago, we were talking to Republicans, uh, and we asked them whether a Democrat can truly be a person of faith if they support issues like transgender rights and abortion. And they didn't think so. Many of them didn't think so. Um, what do you think about that? Pope said it best, who are we to judge? Yeah. So I think if you take that lead, who are we to judge as humans? And Jesus was an activist who was the, who, you know, it's spelled out in the Bible. Like I was raised Catholic too. I know, I know what he said and he was inclusive of everybody. The message is love your neighbor as you love yourself. I don't see how helping trans people could be anti-religious. Like what is the point of that statement? Mm. So they said that Democrats, Democrats can have faith if they believe in trans people. Mm. Can you just repeat it? Because it yeah. just seems like such a, like am I the only one that thinks that's like just a yeah. wild well, thing to the, say? Like what does that mean? About, you gotta think about where they're from too, probably. Mm -hmm. Right, but oh, like, like why are all those well, words in a sentence yeah. and have to do with anything? Like, what Unsurprisingly, the panel had strong views on the indictments the former the President Trump is now facing, but also didn't expect his supporters to waver. If you broke a law, you need to mm -hmm. answer for what you've done. Mm -hmm. um, so whether you're an ex-president, a current president, whoever you are, you, you need to answer for what you did, mm -hmm. the wrongdoings. I mean, like, I think if people do the wrong thing, they should go to jail, but if he were to go to jail himself and the people that support him would just blame everybody else, even though everything, like everybody who has taken the steps into this indictment are mostly been people like appointed by him. It's always like the Democrats or everybody else's fault or they're doing this wrong. Are you surprised that Republicans continue to support him after all the indictments? No. no. Surprised. Tell me why. It's a travesty that this country lets this happen. It's very frustrating. And when I was in my 20s, I would never have an opinion like that, ever. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in my 50s, I'm like, this is bull crap. Mm -hmm. That we as a people, Republic, and some Democrats, and I have to say, even as a woman, we would see banners up that said, vote for Trump. What is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Do you know what that man stands for? Who he is and what he, what he says? In a way, I am surprised because I would think that when the cards are on the table and you see the facts, and you believe th factual evidence, you would come to realize, oh, gee, I guess I had the wrong idea. So that part of me kind of boggles the mind. But on the other hand, I think a lot of them are, it's almost like a cult where, you know, he's Jim Jones and they're drinking the Kool-Aid, you mm -hmm. know? And you, nothing you can say or do will no. turn them around, right. so, you know. There was hope when, you know, Liz Cheney decides to stand up, you know, and speak out against her own party. I thought about, you know, maybe there's a little glimmer of hope, you know, if, if people actually start to rally around her, and, but they didn't. They While feelings against Trump were fierce, feelings for President Biden, whom they all voted for, were more ambivalent. If all these sideshows wasn't going on, I think we're doing pretty good with the Biden's putting a lot of new uh, plans into effect, and he's trying to help out the middle class, working class, and uh, if the Republicans didn't veto them all the time, uh, we'd be doing a lot better. I think things are going pretty well. Um, people in my life have jobs. Things are going, you know, as, as should be. My biggest qualm is the gun violence and guns. That's what has to stop. I mean, it's the leading cause of death in children in the United States, and that's horrible. Yes, he's the president and the shooting. It's a hard struggle, I know. Right, but it's like his hands are almost tied to a certain point. Like mm -hmm. He has so many, he can only do so much as a president. The George Floyd bill, that still hasn't passed. Mm -hmm. That needs to happen. What about abortion? Is that a strong motivating issue for yes. all of you? Yes. It sure is. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely is. And it's a woman's rights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know how we reverted back to them overturning that. I, that I just, just I can't stomach like that blows either. my mind. I, can't, I just can't stomach it. I'm actually worried about the 
where the country is headed. And it's, it's because of things like inflation and rising rent prices and, and things like that. And yeah, it does seem like we're going backwards a little bit, so. You know, cost of living is higher, but like our paychecks or anything are not being, you know, able to like, you know, pay our rent and everything. Like in an inner city like Philadelphia, like my rent is constantly going up and I'm not making more money. So it's just harder to like survive new, even going grocery shopping, everything is just like way more expensive. These um, groups of Democrats from Pennsylvania for... sound so much like the Democrats we talk to across the country. They are kind of uh, middling on Joe Biden. Uh, they tend to not have a great sense of what he's done or a very positive sense of things that he's passed. And then there's still like a lot of economic anxiety from these yeah. voters, um, despite the fact that the macroeconomic picture has been brightening and the Biden administration has been out there trying to tell a positive story about the economy, these voters in their daily lives still feel high gas prices, high rents, they're still feeling the inflation, and that's what they tend to talk about. I think right now, better than we were two, three, four years ago, but I think there's a ways to go. So a mixed picture from this group of Democratic voters looking for more from the Biden administration, who see Trump as continuing to divide the country while also dominating its attention, and who have few answers for how to move beyond him and his support. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Judy Woodruff in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania.